important point. This is the great mark for uh, non-residential buildings, virtual three. Okay, so they have the same thing, energy efficiency, 79, water efficiency, environmental protection, indoor environmental quality, and other green features. The interesting thing about green mark is that this alone is 50% of the rating, and this other four are the other 50%. I was thinking, why would they do such a thing? Singapore is a tropical country. You probably need Mercon. So they watch the airport right away. They throw in energy efficiency as your first and most and biggest component. And they have different systems, similar. So if you're happy with 50, 50 to 74 points, they're not specific. You're certified. 75 to 84 points, you're gold. Gold plus, 85 to 89. And platinum, 90 and above. So in other words, that is how a rating system works. So you have several criteria. You, 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 you uh, conform to those criteria, you get equivalent points, get the total, then try to match it with the, the rules, the rate. Okay? So that's how in, in, the, in the world green buildings are rated. Now. So now, that's a little joke here. So the lead guys are the guys certifying the building. So here are two architects, and this is the lead guy. The lead guy says, I've got good news and bad news. I've got some good news. Your building is very clean. It is the highest rating, Latino. And what's the bad news? The building is still ugly. Okay. This is among us, so we just joke about it. Because sometimes, you know, we get lost so much with technology that we forget the aesthetic part. Philippines, Morocco to be exact. Look at these two examples. I was walking down the beach and I took pictures of it because it struck me, you know? Yeah, right, save the tree! <laughs> My God, what's a good that? If there's a storm, it's gonna leak, you know? It's going to move in left and right. Look at this, Nipa. This one is concrete. Huh? Save the tree! I mean, if you're an architect, you probably send it back, you know? One more meter and no problem. So, in other words, I'm just sharing this joke with you because maybe sometimes we could get carried away by green technology and forget about the, you know, what's the essence of it, you know? Let's move it, huh? Okay. Interesting to note that in the latest encyclical of the Pope, the Caritatis in Veritate, the Pope actually talks about it and I'd like to talk about it because it gives us a very, very good introduction and overview of what is happening today. The Pope starts about this, talks about this. The concept of sustainability, he first talks about this too. That it's like a pendulum. There are two extremes of the pendulum. There are those who say, we own the world, we can abuse the environment. Like one extreme. The other extreme is, hey, 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 don't touch the world, don't touch nature. These are the pure purists, so to speak. You know? We are not either. We should not be either. We are actually supposed to develop the world, live in it, and utilize it. That's why here, the book adds right after that. No? Everyone in the world has the right to use nature, but that right is always balanced out with the duty of sustainability. So that's a very interesting insight coming from, from Pope Benedict. No? Right to use nature, balance out with the duty of sustainability. The next point he brings up is nature is a gift. It's there. No? God has given us the world. We are free to use it, utilize it, and we have to bring it as a gift. It's not something we just given that we're not where we're going to destroy it. And then he even goes up to the detail that you want to get a copy of. Huh? I'm not selling it in any case, just telling it you know what? Here, no? he talks about very, two very clear areas of sustainability. He talks about the need for energy, efficiency. He talks about the need to start making sure we save our fresh water. It's very clear, it's written there. I was surprised. Not expecting it from this guy. In huh? the end, he summarizes it that we have to be responsible for our world. Okay? Bottom line, sustainability. So we have a sick planet. As we showed the pictures earlier in the, in the video presentation from Wilcon, you see that we have a sick planet. We are in a crisis, a climate crisis. And therefore, we have to take serious efforts to look at the three things which we can actually control. Our lifestyle, our energy usage, and the way we produce energy. You know, I was in San Francisco for Thanksgiving last year. 
my parents lived there, you know, he did jump in there. So they requested me to go to, to spend time sleeping with them. Which is a tradition in the US to go there. So we went there, I went there, and uh, me and we actually drank a bit too much. So only my brother I said, hey, let's go, let's, let's get some air. So we decided to do something we've never done. We walked across the Golden Gate Bridge and we were in MC. And I saw this right here, emergency phone, and crisis counseling. I said, oh, that's, that's a nice picture. Okay, crisis counseling. And I thought, now let's, what's this, what's this? So we went closer. Crisis counseling. There is hope. Make the call. The consequences of jumping from this bridge are fatal and tragic. I thought that was a good way because really, look at it this way. Huh? We are in a crisis. We have the option to forget it. This is hopeless. I'm going to just jump off the bridge. I don't want to have anything to do with this work. The problem is too big. I can't solve it. But don't forget, there is hope. And that brings us to the idea that you are the hope. And precisely, the advocacy are called. We're not going to give up on this world, no matter how bad it looked like in the first video. But there is hope. And it's your call. And that's why, precisely, we've invited you here, to, if you want, to help us, or join us in advocating the idea that there is hope. We can save this world through the built environment. And the reason why you're all here is because all of you have green minds, right? Just like me. Okay? Green is in. That's why so many people are here, no? Several years ago, that was hard to sell. Matter of fact, uh, we've experienced many times approaching people and saying, hey, would you like us to talk to you about green architecture? No, it's expensive. End of discussion. Okay? But now, looking at the crowd here, I think that's why we're all together, because green is in. But now, Green is not only the realm of architects, it is the realm of everybody involved with the built environment. That's why here there's a thing called integrated design process. It's not only the architects involved, but you get engineers on board early, you get material suppliers on board early, you get a contractor on board early if possible, the developers. Everybody has to look at the whole project from its inception as a green project. These are the parameters, and then we work on it. That's why. Most of us were, were, were in the green architecture movement of the United Architects of the Philippines. But then, precisely because of this, we decided let's put up another group so that we can have other people interested in the built environment who are not architects. Because if you're not a registered architect, you can never join UAP. Because that's the Institute of Architects of the Philippines. So, so we have this, this, this uh, Green Architect Advocacy Philippines to open up this advocacy to anybody and everybody who is interested in the green environment, or greening the environment, okay? So IDP, huh? and that's why this was for. It's Green Ar Architect Architecture Advocacy Philippines. For short, we call it Green AP. Huh? We registered in SEC, so it's perfectly legal. <laughs> But just in case, I just case your question. You know, these guys are putting up a fly-by-night operation, charging 1,000 and next, next month, we, we won't hear from them anymore. No? They're running away with their 1,000 bucks. No. We are here to stay. I'm just guaranteeing that. Huh? Okay? But we are here to stay and we are going to advocate. Okay. And what do we do? The only thing we do is green at all. That's all. We're not interested in any other thing except this. Now, how is green advocacy done? Now, this is been clarified. Let's look at this picture here. Let's say we are here. This is our society. And let's say here is the ideal green and sustainable world. There's a river between us. You have to first define what a green building is. And this is not the job of advocacy. That is the job of the rating people. So these are the people who create rating systems. They say, to have a green building, you have to conform. Remember earlier I showed the green and the green mark. No? In the Philippines, there are two groups trying to come up with a green building rating system. The first group, they're coming up with a system called BERDE, Building for Ecologically Responsive Design Excellence.